prices have increased over 40%. Energy prices have increased over 20%. Wheat and gas prices have increased over 70%. What's going to be next? Do you see these trends reversing or even stabilizing? All fiat currencies have always failed and collapsed their economies on their way down. The Roman Empire, China, France, Argentina, Finland, Mexico, Russia, and Zimbabwe all tried fiat currency and all collapsed into chaos. Meanwhile, the dollar has lost over 97% of its gold value since 1971, when an ounce of gold was valued at $35. If your assets are in paper, you are in danger. Protect your assets with gold and silver. Visit Discount Gold and Silver Trading at DGSCoins.com. That's DGSCoins.com or call 1-800-375-4188. That's 800-375-4188. Protect yourself and your family. There's a battle for the soul of America. We can't let him tear the kingdom down. This is no game. This is war. Flesh and blood. It's between the bad and good. We can't stop until the trumpet sounds. This is war. Not a game we're playing. This is war. The only question is, which side will you be on? It's time now for a call to decision with Pastor Butch Paul. Hello and welcome, my friends. This is Pastor Butch Paul. It is 1 November 2023. Welcome to tonight's program. We've got a lot to talk about with our guests tonight, but also I'm going to bring you up to date on what's happening with Marcia Jean just in a second. Now, tomorrow being Thursday, I'll be in the office most of the day tomorrow. I don't know what time I have to go pick up Marcia from the hospital in the morning sometime. Don't know what time yet, but I'll be in here tomorrow. Chris will be here all day tomorrow. Take orders and whatever you want to do, donations, whatever. She'll take care of things if I'm not here, but I'll be here some some of the time tomorrow for sure. And I want you all to know, because I went on last night, we're going to extend the special for the filters and the packet of books and the article through tomorrow uh, through tonight. So if you call tomorrow and still want to order the filters, they're on discount right now from uh, the the uh, Jane McCanny filters uh, uh, that are fa- absolutely fantastic. One filter will do what it takes four of the Berkey filters to do. Now, I'm not knocking Berkey, folks, for a fine filter. Jane just, just a little better. So anyway, if you want uh, the filters, facial, call tomorrow and get it. It's, go- it's good through tomorrow. And also the, pa- the offering on the book of uh, is Christmas Christian, Christians and Civil Government. Warning 1965 and the 30-page documentation on the on the fallacies of the so-called Civil War. 25 bucks delivered, okay? You can call tomorrow at the office at 800-777-4403. 800-777-4403 or 304-846-4448. Now, with Marsha, it's a long story. It'll take a lot longer to tell than I have time tonight, but took her to see a diabetic dietary specialist Tuesday. She hadn't slept all night. She wasn't feeling well. To make a long story short, while she's there talking to the, with this young lady, she started having chest pains. She's having to pass. We did, we did a stress test back this past June. Everything was fine, but she's still having pains off and on. So this young lady... So let me check her blood pressure, and it was sky high, 192 over 114. They took her across the hallway to see a, a regular doctor there in this clinic. They started her, uh, they did an EKG, which turned out okay. Uh, gave her four aspirin and, and a uh, nitro tablet. Transported her to Summersville, West Virginia Hospital. They took her in that in the ER that evening. I was there till 7.30 last night. That's why I went back in time to do the radio show. Uh, they did blood tests, all looked good. They did a CP, CPA scan. It's a little, a little more in-depth than a C-scan. Everything looked, looked good there, too. Uh, they kept her overnight in ICU because she had she was on a uh, nitro drip for a while, but they took it out last night, said it wasn't needed. They kept her in ICU, did a echogram today and another stress test. All looks good. She's still not feeling the best, but, but her blood pressure is down. Uh, the problem with her, uh, her, her sugar had been so high for so long that her body just collapsed, more or less, okay? 
I want you all to pray hard, please, that I can help her get this diabetes under control, that she can have the willpower to stay away from sugary products or anything else she shouldn't have. It's a big battle, folks. Sugar is an addiction. I don't, I mean, just pray that she'll have the strength and to work with it and get off that. But she'll be home tomorrow, uh, and she's doing much better. Uh, physically, your blood pressure and things down. She's doing much better now. I'm praying that we get home tomorrow and things will get back to somewhat normal and we can start making grounds and uh, uh, gains and are feeling better. So thank you for your prayers for her. It was a little scary uh, yesterday morning, Tuesday morning, watching there in the Rainell Medical Clinic, uh, going through what she's going through and the pain she's in. And it was a little, little nerve wracking. I had a lot, at least I could talk to my father, have a lot of prayer and, and all the. Ladies there in that office were very, very good to her. Brought her. Some of you, like I said, in the hospital, they were very good to her also. Very Kept a very c- a close eye on her. So she is improving and will be home tomorrow. So I'll be in the office tomorrow at least part of the day. I want you all to know that. So forgive me for not being here last night, but I, I stayed with her as late as I could until I had to get home and take care of some things here at the house. So that's what's happened with Marcia Jean. And again, thank you for your prayers. I truly do appreciate it. And our guest tonight... It's been on my broadcast. It's been a long time ago. His name is Jonathan O'Toole. He's the head of Project C, S-E-E, Sierra Echo Echoes. Project C, which stands for Stop Exporting Evil. Project Stop Exporting Evil. He's been involved in the trying to save unborn babies' lives for years. He's been involved in a lot of things, trying to make a difference in, in our society, folks. And if you worked, if you worked in this battle, in this one, maybe his particular battle or my battle on radio for almost thirty-one years, sometimes you get a little frustrated because you see it seems you're not gaining a lot of ground. But you see, our God, our Father, doesn't doesn't measure victory by our timetable. Besides, that, he said, if one soul is saved, it's worth worth more than the whole world. So we mustn't be discouraged in the battle, folks. Sometimes you get a little tired and frustrated, as I'm sure Jonathan has. And he has put up a, a valiant fight for a lot of reasons. So let's bring up our guest tonight, Jonathan and O'Toole. Jonathan, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, Pastor Bush. Thank you for the for the good introduction. Oh, uh, you're but, boy, you're, you're, you're sure right about uh, sugar being an addiction. I know this is a side point, but um, it really is. It's at least as bad as nicotine in, in my um, understanding. But you can't give it up. You can't give it up. So, um, and your body will go into ketosis at a certain point. So so be encouraged. Uh, we're, well, thank we're praying you. for her. Yeah, just yeah. pray that, you know, we can work that through. She's, you know, it's not that she doesn't need a lot of it one time. But she doesn't, doesn't need any of it. I'm a diabetic myself. Agent Orange sure. uh, killed, um, killed my pancreas many, many years ago. It, it died. Wow. And I've had to fight it for a long time. But by diet, I keep it pretty much under control with that and some medicine. I don't like medicine, but it is what it is. It's a constant battle. It's never, it's never easy to, to keep the physical flesh under no. control. I don't care what your addiction is, whether it's booze, drugs, pornography, or whatever it is, your flesh right. always wants to go. You have, to, you have to husband your body just like a vine dresser has to husband the, the, the vineyard Good or, point. or animal husbandman. It's Good a, point. You've got you to gotta, you gotta govern it and lovingly, not abusively, and only the Holy Spirit can can show us how. I Good wanted point. to tell you that in um, in 07... <laughs> It was the first time I visited Africa. Um, that was Kenya, and I had dreamed for for at least the past eight years of visiting, but I actually went. Now, Jonathan, be, before you, before you get started, that I want to tell yeah. folks a little bit about who Jonathan Two is. I mean, we spoke okay. before; it's been a long time ago. But tell the folks how you got involved and what all you've been involved in, so they know who Jonathan yeah, is. Yeah, more than more than twelve years ago, you you interviewed me because I was I was arrested because I. Along with Brother Neil Horsley, I rebuked Elton John in front of his home in Georgia. The, you know, the singer who just retired, Elton John, who's, who's so-called married to a man. And he had said in 2010 that Jesus was um, a gay man in Parade Magazine. And, 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 we and, and, by, and by the way, and by the way, let's not use the word gay to describe sexual deviants. Let's call them what they are, homosexuals. He's a uh, sodomite, sodomite, he's sodomite but that's yes, not what Elton yes. John said. In his, I'm quoting him directly. He said okay. Jesus was All a right. gay man. But but what it, you're absolutely right. That word is a masking word. That word is a lie. Gaiety is frivolity, joy, the way you feel good around your family at the holidays. It is not to sodomize or abuse someone else. So you're completely right, Pastor Butch. Anyway, that's what he said. He meant that um, the, our Lord Jesus Christ was like him, which is a lie. So we rebuked him in front of his house with a scripture verse and reminded him that the book of Hebrews says, I believe it's Hebrews 9:27. it is appointed unto all men once to die, 
wants yep. to die, and then the judgment. And Elton John took that as a terrorist threat. His security detail came out, it's on video, and talked with me. But anyway, from the 1990s, I was involved in anti-abortion protests. But what happened this year, they came out and talked to me, and two weeks later, he had enough pull with the FBI and the state and the city of Atlanta to send a SWAT team to our house and drag my family members around and, you, you know, the full SWAT gear and charge us with terrorism. And it took me sitting two months in jail. And you're the only member of the media who spoke up for me at that time. But I, Lord, forgive wow. me if I'm wrong. It's been a while. But I'm the only Christian talk show that hosted me during that time. Eventually, the judge threw out the charges. This is nonsense. And they knew it was nonsense. But they're just punishing us because what God calls an abomination is what they call sacred. Yes, They've inverted yes, everything. Yes. And by they, I mean the people running this world system right now, worldwide. And that's why I founded um, Project C, is because not only is this affecting us here in America, but the leverage that our country has and our Western, what used to be a civilization has, <laughs> is being used since we, were, we won supposedly World War II. All that leverage is being used to force these abominations like sodomy and baby murder on people worldwide through our government directly through money and through ngos and igos like unfpa at the united nations building i was there four years ago in manhattan i was transiting between flights and i just took the the subway to, um, 9 p.m at night just to pray a prayer on the public sidewalk in front of the unfpa building and the New York, I have the email I could show you. The New York FBI seized my Facebook account two weeks later. Um, not all I did was pray an imprecatory prayer. I didn't threaten them. I just prayed that the Lord would destroy them as a symbol. UN FPA, the UN, I think it's Family Planning Initiative, something like that. What is it called? UN, uh, what they say on their website is that we want to deliver a world where every pregnancy wanted. And what that is is satanic newspeak for we're going to kill every baby we can get our hands on yep, uh, who wasn't predicted. And when they say wanted, they're not talking about the will of God. They're talking about their will that they're imposing, because when God creates a human conception, that's God revealing his will, no matter the circumstances, that this person should exist. So, um, that's why I want want you to reiterate. Now, folks, listen to this. I want him to reiterate that. No matter his will, even in rape, God allowed this for a purpose. Let's say, you know, I'm a married man. Let's say someone, God forbid, in Jesus' name, but let's say someone raped your wife and she conceived. All right, let's get the worst case scenario out of the way rape or incest. The act is a crime. It's just like the last chapter of Genesis. Everything that the brothers of Joseph, you may recall the Bible story, did to him was criminal, wrong. They intended murder. They sold him into slavery. Everything, Potiphar's wife lied about him. Everything that was done to him was wrong. And nonetheless, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, Joseph said, what you meant for evil, the Lord intended for good. So the same actions were intended by the Lord, and it's the same in the conception of a person. Even in, let's say, a brother impregnates his sister, a father impregnates his daughter. Well, that that person deserves to be executed, that that brother or that uh, father. All right? I'm not saying the crime is right, but the innocent person conceived, and guess that that is a decision made by God. That person has done no wrong, and all of us, you, Pastor Butch, if you go back, and me, if I go back far enough, if it's one, or if it's two, or if it's a hundred generations, there's an act of rape there in our lineage, in my lineage, in yours. There's an act of incest with all the wars, with all the incest throughout history. Believe me. And think about it. Every time you got two parents, you got four grandparents, you got eight great grandparents, you take that back 500 years, you've got a million ancestors. How much you want to bet there's rape, there's incest in there. No doubt. At some point. No and doubt. yet the Lord uses, that's his uh, characteristic, his signature, is that he uses, he takes evil and he works it for good. Yes, he, the, he always, the, his sovereign will will be done. That's right. If that's we, right. If we uh, will allow his will to be done in our lives. And, you know, this that's is right. going to sound like maybe uh, doublespeak, but if we kill the baby, then 
he allowed it for something that maybe later on he'll, I don't know. This this is something, folks, is way beyond my comprehension. But our God is sovereign. He alone rules in affairs of men, period, and rules in affairs of nations. And his will will be done eventually. He knows what he's doing. Yes, yeah. he does. Would, yes, he does. So anyway, and we, so and you, and you, you went to jail for that. If Christ could submit, I didn't mean to. But That's all right. You, you, went, you went to jail. On the cross. Yes, yes. I yes. Did. Yes. Then we can submit to evil done to us and trust the Lord to bring it to good. I went to jail, and they they let me out in two months because it was bogus. I didn't. It was a Bible verse that that he called a threat. He called it a terrorist threat. You know? But they tried to put us in prison for Neil, in Neil's case ten years, in my case five years, and the Lord intervened on our behalf. We had a good a good judge let us out. But since then, I've been going to Africa, and I go to high schools. I go to secondary schools. I work with the team there. And the past month, we've been going to the slums, the neighborhoods where people target these um, innocent children and the, and the women in the crisis pregnancies who are already in poverty. They target them with abortifacient pills, with coils, with IUDs, intrauterine devices that, that damage, that actually cause abortions, number one, um, and that, that damage people and damage the eggs of women. So we're working to expose anything like that, anything that would sterilize people or abort, abort people. I believe the devil's goal, because the, the angels don't reproduce, they're not supposed to anyway, um, the devil's goal is to curb human reproduction the same way he wanted to prevent baby Moses and he wanted to prevent baby Jesus. He wants to prevent anyone who could, who could be conceived or born alive, who could give their, his life to Jesus, because that's a, a threat to the kingdom of darkness. So, so there's a big push from our country. And one thing I wanted to say um, to your audience is don't be surprised when the Lord takes down America and the West, uh, because we've allowed it to become the conduit for this river of abominations to flow into people who, in most cases, are much more innocent than us. Christian people, pagan people, Muslim people worldwide are being forced to look at, hear, and have shoved down their throat these abominations because we let our government in D.C. get out of control. And thanks, Pastor Butch, by the way, for talking about the, uh, the war of northern aggression because a lot of it begins right there when the government started to manifest this, this mind of a, a beast or a monster. I agree. But, you know, you, you said a key word there, too. We have let the government. Right. Now, if you, I know you know the Bible. When David yeah. sinned, the people paid. Uh, when leaders right. sinned, the people pay. When Because people can stop it if they want to. America's That's got right. to pay as a people because we allowed our government to murder 100 million babies. I know they say this not high, but it is that high, probably more. We've allowed them to sodomize their sons, pervert their daughters, destroy our schools. We have That's allowed right. that. And especially the blame lies in the churches and even more specifically behind the pulpits of the churches. Do you agree with that? I, 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 I do. I do. The, the shepherds, the shepherds have, have, um, have fed themselves and have fleeced the flock. And it also begins with the individuals. Because many people say, well, I haven't done any of those things. I haven't done abortion. I haven't done this. Guess what, Daniel, when you read the prophet Daniel, he had an individual. He was a, a, a young man and, by all accounts, very innocent when he was taken into Babylonian captivity. And yet in his prayer of repentance in captivity in Babylon, he doesn't exclude himself. I don't have it in front of me right here. I have another. I have Isaiah pulled up here, but I believe it's Daniel chapter 7. But he says, we, we, we have done these things. We have deserved these things. Absolutely. So it goes Absolutely. right to what you said. Absolutely. The, the, um, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. There's a young lady. I say young. She's probably thir- thirty-seven. I, I want to have one more thing. I want to have one more thing, please, if you don't mind. Yes, sir. I don't mean to keep interrupt you, but no you're problem. doing such a great job. Yeah. You're getting me excited here, and we're going to talk about Lord <laughs> the Green in a second. But, but I was just yes, thinking. Uh, you heard. Uh, everyone knows the, the uh, parables. Uh, the parable of the of the of the uh, Good Samaritan. We all know that. We all know. Yes. That. Well, you know the, the, the first two that passed by, one being a priest, and different things. God saw them pass by. Now, they, they right. didn't rob the man. They didn't beat the man. But they didn't want to get involved in trying to save his life. Well, what does, what does, what does Proverbs 24, verse 11, 12 say about those that don't, don't want to get involved in saving innocent lives? Now, we what will give a count. 
But uh, he said, he said we'll that, give that, that uh, yeah, we will give account. He said that does God does not God know you what you've done? I mean, in other words, he's telling those us, we, you, all of us that didn't get involved, that we're going to pay for walking by that wounded man or walking by that murdered child. Well, we, that's right. we shrug things off, but we have a voice, and it's powerful. Yes, we the word, the, the whole, everything exists because God spoke. Well, we if, 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 if we if we were willing to pick up arms to save an unborn child. That's what right. are we going to fight for? Our right to keep the, the right to keep and bear arms? Are we going? Are we going to fight to save our gun rights while they murdered hundred million babies? That's the irony. Yeah. That's the irony of it. Is is that is, is, is as soon as they talk about curbing rights, but in reality, the reason we have the Second Amendment is because of tyranny. And if That's we're right. going to tolerate the most defenseless people in our midst being torn limb for limb uh, from limb for decades, then we don't deserve our gun rights. I agree. Americans, Christians, uh, right-wingers, Trump supporters, evangelicals, we love our guns. If we're not going to organize duly and orderly manner to defend the innocent people and to remove this blight, the, the young lady I was talking about is Tabitha Wairimu in Kenya. I wasn't talking about Lorna. Oh, oh, gotcha. and she's okay, a, okay. A, a, a lady with a, a prophetic anointing, a deaconess, a, a humble, traditional lady, and she was in a prayer meeting, and she called me, and she reminded me of Isaiah chapter 1, and she was complaining about how she's dealing with a lot of children who have been exposed to pornography, and a lot of that pornography is flowing out of our country, California, Absolutely. places like that. If, if you if you read about America, the America in the Bible, read Revelation 18, that's all about us. Go ahead. That's right. Little children in, who don't even have le- access to electricity are borrowing cell phones in Kenya and, and reenacting the sodomy and the evil on each other uh, bec- that is pouring out from our country, something that never would have even entered my head as a little child. But they're having to deal with it in rural communities around the world because of smartphones. When we could put it into it, I remember watching an episode of Dragnet where Sergeant Friday, this was just the early 1970s, they were still arresting people for pornography in the state of California, in Los Angeles. That's right. It's not as though that's ancient history. You don't have to go back to the Victorian era. We could do it today. And you can identify the people because you can see every mole on their body. You know, and you can find out who's behind the camera, too. All this uh, money that we're wasting on other things in this country or on Ukraine, we could use it to clean clean our act up. But our priorities are wicked. Yeah, our priorities are wicked. So Tabitha asked me to remind people about Isaiah chapter 1. I, I can't read the whole thing. Uh, for you here. But if if you get the chance, open your Bible and read, especially Isaiah chapter 1, verses 10 through 20, those 10 verses. And just the beginning one is the way the Lord addresses the people, hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear, you people of Gomorrah. And in the middle of the passage, he, he warns them, wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, uh, take away the evil of your doings, learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the the fatherless plead for the widow. And then he ends by saying, if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured with the sword for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Now, that's what the Lord is saying now to America. We are on the precipice of Armageddon. Our country is the conduit for all kinds of unspeakable evil we can't even describe in public, okay, without blushing to go to innocent children around the world, including human t- trafficking. And what Ms. Tabitha Wairimu, this prophetic deaconess, was telling me is warn the people of America. Judgment is falling on the whole earth, but especially on those places that have the leverage to stop it. And where the, the Christians, I'm not talking to the unbelievers, the people who know their God, who know the Lord Jesus Christ, who know the Holy Spirit, who know the Father, and yet are refusing, are refusing to use, to make the sacrifice necessary to stop it. It gets to the point where even though you mentioned the Good Samaritan, he was a heretic. Samaritans were like Muslims back yes, then. Yes, they, had, yes. they, had, they, they had part of the truth, but they had corrupted the truth. They, they were like Muslims. And yet the Lord reaped a better harvest out of Samaria because the people who he said had the true religion, Jesus said, the Jews know who we worship. They had the correct doctrine. And yet he said, um, what did he say, twofold or threefold? He said, you, you compass sea and land, said Matthew, woe unto you, Matthew 23, 5. 
Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell Amen. than yourselves. Amen. Now, they had the truth. They're, they're proselytizing, they're missionaries going to people who, who didn't have the truth. And yet, it, from what Jesus said, it would have been better if they just stayed in their ignorance and never heard the truth, because, because the truth was so corrupted in the mouths of the Pharisees and the scribes, even though they had the truth. Now, let that sink in for a moment. People can possess the truth. And if you think, well, that's a long time ago, that's 2,000 years ago. Well, Paul tells us in Colossians, all these things happened unto them. Now, he's talking about the parting of the Red Sea and Moses, but I would argue it goes right up to the time of Jesus. Everything that happened to the Jews, every mistake they made, right up to the destruction of the temple in A.D. 70, we should look at it. It didn't just happen to them so that we would say, oh, those Jews were bad. It happened, Pastor Butch, so that we would look, and the Bible says this is an ensample. It happened unto them for ensamples and are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world. Absolutely. Even even the destruction of Simon Gomorrah was written, for example. Uh, That's right. For a warning to us. That's very true. Very, very true. Not just an exciting story. Yes, sir. It is an exciting story. It the whole Bible is full of exciting things. And but again, yes, I, I, folks, I promise you that read read Second uh, Kings twenty four four, brothers and sisters. Listen to what I'm yes. saying. God said He would not pardon the shedding of innocent blood. Second Kings twenty four four. That's what He said. Oh, Lord, we, the church, is going to are going to pay hell. And I didn't say we're going to hell. We're going to pay for it in our lifetime. And see, it's sad part of it is, though, our children are going to pay because we didn't stand. My generation didn't stand, folks. I, hey, I take the blame. This happened oh, on my Lord watch. Mercy. Happened on my watch. I want to take, yes, I've cried aloud, and I've, I took a stand, and I, speak, I spoke about it. Me but too. it happened on my watch. The my murder, watch by the way, more children being murdered now by, by abortion in this country than were before Roe v. Wade was overturned. Because the, the people are panicking and crossing, crossing other states when you get the babies killed quicker. That's right. That's actually killing more. Folks, think about so we're that. We're in for a whipping. We're in yeah, for a whipping. Yeah, we are. We and, are. Uh, Christians don't like to hear that because they say, well, Jesus saved me from hell. Well and good. The Lord saved you from hell. But Hebrews says, he scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. That means with a whip. That's not talking about the unbeliever. Talking about the son. The Lord scourgeth every son. Now, he's not going to, if you steal a cookie, he's not going to beat you within half an inch of your life. He's not sadistic. He's not like that. But if you do like David did, stole the wife of Uriah, and you're his child, something serious, you better believe you're going to get a, a, a scourging. Well, if he loves us, he'll, unless we're bastards, he said, he, he's going he's to correct us. Folks, back at the break, right. people are going to call a lot more talk about We're going to talk about a lady named Lorna Green. About a movie that Jonathan put out called Retaliation. Retaliation. Eight, uh, 844-769-2944. Satan's army roams the land, seeking souls of fallen men. Hi folks, Pastor Butch Paul here. I'm certain that I don't need to tell y'all we're living in unstable times, or as the Bible says, perilous times. We're starting to see shortages of many products in America, cars, clothing, furniture, and even food. We can't do much about the cars, clothing, and furniture, but we can with the food, simply by calling the Manor Foods, the best and stable foods at bar none. They have a shelf life over 25 years, are great tasting, no GMOs, no chemical preservatives, no aspartame or high fructose corn syrup, and no MSGs. Give the man a call at 888-597-0775. That's 888-597-0775. Or go to Nemana.com. Mention the Pastor Butch sent you and get a 10% discount. That's 888-597-0775. You'll be glad you did. Are you paying an arm and a leg for a healthy alternative lifestyle? Are you tired of products not meeting your expectations? Is it becoming harder for you to have faith in restoring your body to the temple it began as? I know your struggle is real, and I'd be honored to help you and those you care about feel better and thrive. 
With organic ingredients and no fillers made right here in our own country, many of which are wildcrafted right here in the mountains of Montana, we at Superior Mountain Herbs are blessed to be able to get you the best herbal products with no hassles or misleading information. Truth and transparency is what you get with us. For a free list of products available to hear this month's special as well, please call Summer at 406 274 7579 or email me at green with an E at the end, assistant summer at gmail.com. That's green with an E at the end, assistant summer at gmail.com. There's a lot of talk all over the internet these days about the remarkable benefits of carbon 60, and baby boomers are especially excited about it. Whatever generation you're in, if you want more energy, better health, and a boost in vitality, we invite you to try Greska's Carbon 60, a stunning development in free radical destruction. Being much smaller in size than conventional antioxidants derived from fruits and vegetables, it is far more bioavailable to quickly mend the toxin-crippled cells in your body. Greska's Carbon 60 is the only C60 product that is made without the use of undesirable solvents, the only one. Greska's Carbon 60 was developed by a brilliant NASA carbon scientist and 95% report positive results from this Nobel Prize winning technology in just four days. Visit c-60.com. That's c-60.com or call 720-600-6040. Since the beginning of the United States, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, It has been traded, borrowed, purchased, and stolen. There is a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. That's 1-800-375-4188. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom on Shortwave Radio. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call 1-800-375-4188. That's 1-800-375-4188. For the very best in gold and silver trading, call toll-free 1-800-375-4188. That's 1-800-375-4188. Call now. This is war, not a game we're playing. This is war. Alrighty, folks, we're back and we're on the second half of this program. This first half hour flew by for me. I hope it did for y'all too, because our guest tonight is so interesting and so encouraging to speak with, with his courage. Now, get a pen and paper handy. I'm going to give you an address in a minute. And it's for a young lady named Lorna, L-O-R-N-A, green, just like in the, in the green crayon, color green. Lorna Green. I want you to get a pen and paper handy, write down this address, and write this young lady a letter. We're going to further detail later on on how maybe we can help her financially. She's in jail because she took a stand against a murder clinic to the point of trying to get rid of it, and now she's in jail. This, and uh, that's all I won't get into. I'll let, I'll let uh, my Brother Jonathan explain what happened here. We get a pen and paper handy. We need to write her and tell her that we're praying for her. Okay, so get a pen and paper handy. Go ahead, Jonathan. Okay, her name is Lorna, L-O-R-N-A, Roxanne, the normal spelling, R-O-X-A-N-N-E, green. But now, if if you don't catch this, just email me, Jonah O'Toole, that's J-O-N-A-O-T-O-O-L-E, at gmail.com, and I'll, I'll send this address to you. She's being held in Nebraska uh, temporarily. She's not yet in the Bureau of Prisons, federal, it's a federal conviction, but it's Lorna Roxanne Green, Inmate number zero seven four five six two, and the address is two five two two Seventh Street, Gering. That's G E R I N G, Nebraska six nine three four one. I don't know how much longer she's going to be there. Again, that's two five two two Seventh Street, Gering, Nebraska six nine three four one. Lorna Roxanne Green, inmate. Inmate number zero seven four five six two. I'll give that right. to you if you email.
email me. Okay, but, and, by, and yeah. by the way, the, the name of the town is, you said Deering or Gearing? No, Gearing, uh, G, G as like in God. Golf. Okay, e, G like in golf. Yeah, okay. golf, G-E-R-I-N-G, Gearing, Let me repeat, let me repeat that, folks. Write this down, folks. We'll, we'll give it to you again. Write this down. I'm going to go over a little slower here. Lorna, L-O-R-N-A, Lorna, Roxanne, R O X. A N N E Green, like in the color green. G R E E N. Inmate number. I probably say you probably put down I N. Inmate number zero seven four five six two. Right. That's the zero seven four five six two. The address is two five two two. That's two five two two seventh. Street, Gearing, G like in golf, E R I N G, Nebraska, N B, November, Bravo. No, 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 no. Yeah, N E, N E. N E. Excuse me. I'm sorry. N E. I should knew that. N E. Okay. November Echo, N E, six nine three four one, six nine three four one. Drop her. Please drop her a card or a short letter. I don't know you're praying for. I don't think they'll allow anything except for just a white sheet of paper. You write on a white sheet of paper. Okay, I can't, but they, they do let you put an envelope, right? Yeah, well, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, but, I, uh, they change all the time. I, we used, yeah. I used to send newsletters. To, I used to send newsletters to the prison. They stopped them. I said, I'm not sometimes, that they, yeah, they the different yeah. ones have different rules, but but cards have been getting sent back. Yeah. Okay. Well, what she right. did, uh, what what she um, eventually pled to was um, she lives something like an hour away from Casper, Wyoming. And when you may recall, you know, years ago, George Tiller, who aborted only third trimester babies, was shot dead. He was shot before, a decade before in the 1990s by a grandmother in his arms, but he just went back to work. Um, that's Shelley Shannon. That's another story. But he was shot dead by Scott Roeder in the head, in his church, with a twenty two pistol. Well, there was a woman who worked for him, I don't remember his name, but very committed to, um, you know, abortion. And she started this clinic in Casper, Wyoming, of all places. And Lorna Roxanne Green, if you Google her name, you'll see her face. This is the most innocent-looking, but you see an angel staring back at you when you, when you see her mug shots. She just is glowing with innocence, like something out of a... Uh, a, a, a painting or something. It's hard for me to describe. But she was having terrible nightmares in her recurrent nightmares about little babies being killed by abortion. And so she woke up in the middle of the night one night and took uh, petrol. She took, um, I've been in the UK too long, uh, gasoline um, and broke in. There's nobody in the clinic. And she set it on fire. And she was wearing a mask. And they caught her something like a year later from the security cam footage. Somebody, actually, somebody, somebody told on her. I think somebody that uh, ratted on her. I don't, I'm not sure about that. But she destroyed that building, and it was shut down for over a year and cost a hundred thousand dollars more damage. Lord knows how much. But um, had the courage. No person was harmed. She destroyed a building. Bricks don't bleed. And for a year, they were not able. They were not able to set up their shop of, of murdering innocent people there. Now, this should be an indictment, Pastor Butch, on all of us able-bodied men like you and me in this nation who are walking around and we've got our pistol and we've got our shotgun and we're um, and and we think of ourselves as patriots and constitutionalists, and yet we have tolerated the wholesale slaughter of innocent. Little boys and girls in the same image that Jesus was in, in the image of the in the womb of the Virgin Mary, and yet we t- this beautiful young lady, twenty two years old, with her whole life ahead of her, had the courage on her own to destroy a building, a building, and now with all the criminality that our criminal government is allowing to to walk free. There's a place in the Bible where it says, "I have this against you: you've killed the people." That that deserve to live. Those would be those innocent unborn babies, and you've allowed those people to live. I forget that passage, the the uh, which part of the Bible that's in. But you've allowed those to live who deserve to be put to death 
And that's what we've done. This young woman is behind bars. Now, they say on the Bureau of Prisons, the inmate locator says her release date, maybe the Lord will do a miracle. Let's pray. Her release date is October 2027. She'll still be in her in her late 20s by then, so that's relatively good. But um, th- she puts us to shame, Pastor Butch. Twenty yes. Beautiful, 22-year-old, I believe she's an engineering student, her whole life ahead of her, loved her unborn neighbor, her pre-born baby neighbor enough. And guess what? We've got pro-lifers around the country ignoring her, condemning her, and the worst part is just the ignorance, like the people who walk by. They say they're the advocates for the children. We should be back in the Irish, and I don't endorse Sinn Féin and the Irish Republican Army, but I'm using them for an example. When their people were in jail, they would go around with petitions. They would make them into icons of their movement. They were proud of them, okay? They were proud of them. When the apostles, when Peter and Paul and uh, Barnabas, people like that were in jail, they would say, these people were ashamed of me and my bonds. These other people stood by me. Because the government has the power to put a big mark on you, whether you've done anything wrong or not. They have the ability to just treat you like a criminal, okay? And then people who say they love the Lord and are his ministers shy away from you. Oh, Lord is in jail. Well, that's when she becomes like the Lord himself is behind bars. And whatever we do for her, it's like we're doing it uh, for him, him. Pastor. That's right. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And folks, hang on your pen. Give the address again in case you missed. Let's take a phone call. Let's go to Texas and talk to Lee. Lee, come on in. Welcome. Oh, Bush, thanks for taking my call. You're welcome. You know, I've been wondering for several months now why we're getting so many illegal aliens in here. It very well may be we get one for every murdered baby that we've killed. That's a lot more coming, <laughs> wow. if that's true. That's very true. And I, I do know the legal's coming across now faster than people being born in this country, legal citizens being born. Yeah. Can you imagine? No, I'm not making it up, folks. I'm serious. Do what now? You imagine sixty or seventy million of them. Well, we we got three some million already. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yes, good point. Anyway, I just want to, just point. want to mention that because we're going to pay for this one way or the other. We're you know, going to be replaced. We, uh, the land this, vomits out. The Bible yes. says. Oh, I didn't mean to talk over the pastor. Go ahead, Jonathan. Go ahead. I was the land. When the children of Israel were possessing the land, um, it's in the book of Leviticus. Moses, through God, through Moses, well, God wanted John, John, to... John, we're, we're losing you. We're losing you. We're, we're losing you. You're fading out on us. me? Yeah, you're fading out on us. What about now? How That's this? better. That's better. All right. Uh, God warned the children of Israel that if they would commit the abominations of the Canaanites, he said, don't do it. Don't murder your children. Don't commit sodomy. Don't legalize adultery, or the land itself will vomit you out. Amen. I agree. Totally. Totally. Anything else you want to say, Lee? I guess Lee's already gone. But good comment. I guess we lost him. I I hadn't thought about that way before. Very good point. I know the Bible says we'll we'll, we'll pay double. Yeah, that's not a special um, law that was for the children of Israel. The the land didn't vomit out the Canaanites because they ate pork. Those were all special things for the children of Israel. Um, He never commanded the Canaanites not to eat pork, things like that. But there's a universal law for all people. The Lord will is patient with people. Not everybody knows him. Not everybody's hurt. But there's some things that nobody gets to do, or they don't have the right to live on God's green earth. Among those are to normalize. There'll always be some sodomy. There'll always be some baby murder, okay? But when you normalize it, when you tolerate it, when you legalize it, and then you celebrate it, you don't have the right to exist on God's green earth anymore. And this young lady called Lorna Roxanne Green. (laughs) There's a little bit of a connection there. Wow. Well, you know, that's... She's a green... Yeah. Yeah. She's a life uh, that we have left in our youth. Jesus said, if these things be done in the green branch, which were him, the life was in him, what's going to be done in the dry? If we take the, the most loving, living people like Lorna Green, we put them in a cage, we put down every man who says we should fight this wickedness, What's going to happen? We're going to be like tinder, like the Bible says, a, 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 a faggot, a bundle of sticks ready to be burned and consumed. But don't wonder, don't be surprised when America is no more. 
I agree. I agree. Oh, the America I grew up there. the America I grew up in is no more already. Let's speak to uh, yeah. Gary in Arizona. Gary, come on in. Welcome. Uh, hi, Butch. Hi, hi, Jonathan. Uh, good to hear hi. your voice on this show again. Uh, I do uh, 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 make a contribution to uh, to, to the uh, uh, to, uh, to your. What, what, who are you with now? I, I, my, the Pro- name Pro- Project, Project C. Project C. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, okay, we're going to talk ahead. about my movie. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Gary. Uh, okay, well, I just want to uh, say this to see if you agree with it or not. I just wrote this little bitty piece here. It says, sure. uh, for years and years, we have heard that it was our diversity that, that makes our nation strong. Uh, we know that. That was on, that was on a, you know, the radio all the time, on the TV. And, you know, amazing. Okay, a house divided against itself cannot stand. I wonder who said that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, men, men, men want to be women. Women want to be men. Okay, and the killing of preborn babies, okay, is referred to as a woman's health care. What a nonsense. Mm-hmm. Uh, the very fact that you and I are here today is living proof of that. Okay, right. we want, once, once we're one, okay, we have sown to the wind and we are reaping our crop. And its name is chaos. Amen. This land is a land of chaos. If you're a man and you want to be a woman, you how can you get any more chaotic than that? I agree. And Perverted. when you want to Perverted. do it, yes. Yeah, diversity. Yeah, diversity. At least, at least diversity is an English term in and of itself. I, uh, I, we, I, I think. Repeat, we, we repeat that, Jonathan. I said diversity is a meaningless term in and of itself. You can, if you if you have a toolbox, you want a diversity of tools. You don't want to have just one a wrench or just a hammer. But the question is, it begs the question: diversity of what? If you have a math problem, you can't have a diversity of answers. You, you know, it's got a correct answer, and all the rest are incorrect. So when they when they put out some, it's a it's a foolish idea to put out a word like that, and you don't define what's the object. Diversity of what? Diversity of opinions? Diversity of ethnicities? Well, what's our common ground here? So it's one of those nonsense words like gay, diversity, that's just a, it's not even rational. It's just put out there as a, um, almost like an idol for us to worship. So I agree with you, Gary. Well, yeah, you know, yeah, I, you know I, I, I agree. Uh, I'm sorry, Butch, go ahead. I, I, I was going to say that no, no, no home. No, no home can, can be united without common core values. They cannot stay united. That's right. How much less a nation? Go ahead, Gary. Oh, uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Jonathan, you know, I mean, I, I do a street display. I, I set up babies, uh, pictures of preborn babies uh, uh, being destroyed by their own mothers. Wonderful. And, Wonderful. Uh, yeah, and, and so show I people uh, the horror of that. And I try to tell people I, with the loudest voice, I say, look, you guys all the time want to use that word abortion, 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 abortion. Oh, yeah, you know, let me find something. You you cannot stop something that hasn't already started. It has to have a start. That's right. So Good I point. ask these people, now, what's the start? I said, you know, uh, when your mother and father, you know, uh, you, you know, you know, come together in a, in a loving relationship and, and brought you forth, you had a start. All you got to do is take a look at yourself. You know, and, 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 and you'll realize that that's a little bit of human being. That's a little bit of human that's being right. in the earliest stages, in the earliest stages of development. And if you better not do nothing to touch that baby. You better not. That's right. Because that's if, you don't, if, if you don't repent, <laughs> and if you don't repent of that, that the, the fact is you're a person, that's a person that you're aborting. So you, what you're aborting is a, a person's life. And you're also a person. And the Lord, if you don't repent, can abort you eternally. The Lord can abort you eternally. He can do yeah. it, and he promises to do it if you don't flee to the blood of Jesus uh, without, without any equivocation. Repent. Uh, Amen. You're Amen. absolutely right. Um, if you want to get a hold of me, at retaliationmovie.com is what I'm promoting right now, Pastor Butch. Okay, we, we, okay. Uh, Gary, if you want to email him, retali- retaliationmovie.com. Retaliation. My email movie. address is there. Yeah. Yes. And if and you missed the call, address Gary, for Lorna, okay, yo, go ahead. Go ahead. Go if, Gary. if you if you miss the address for Lorna, I will just email me. I'll I'll, I'll copy. Yeah, and I'll, I'll no have problem. it tomorrow too in the office, Gary. I have the office to you know, have an office tomorrow too. For uh, you. Yeah. Thanks, I'll, for call. I'll, 
I, I will get that from you to, uh, tomorrow, but you know, and okay. it also reminds me of Michael Gray. Remember Michael Gray, who burned that that uh, abortion uh, house yes. of death down back yes. years ago? I just talked to him yes. yesterday. Uh, either, <laughs> go ahead. Did you? Did you really? Yeah, well, he's yes, the one that got me involved in this, you know. Uh, yeah, so when I, uh, he taught me, uh, you know, I've been out on the street trying to save these little wow. baby babies for all God, God knows how long. And uh, you've been arrested you know, for those crimes. Pardon? They like to arrest people you, for holding those signs. Yeah, they like to call uh, the police. Well, signs. Thankfully, I haven't. I haven't been arrested here. Uh, you know, I people yeah, try to run me over a couple times. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah, they shot but, a man. Uh, they shot a man in uh, Wisconsin yeah. a few years ago. Oh, just yeah, holding Gary, one I, 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 I got to jump another call, but thanks, call Gary. Do call me tomorrow, okay? Folks, we let's go now. Yeah, okay, I will PA, do. Dar- okay, Daryl and PA, come on in. Yes, everybody, and please. Pray for that uh, lady. I'm looking at a picture of her right now on the internet. Uh, Lorna Roxanne Green. Praise the Lord for uh, mighty women of valor and mighty men of valor, like Gary Roby, who was just on. Amen. Uh, his wife Donna Roby needs prayer. She's got cancer in her hip, and she gets out oh, there and holds signs and uh, protests against baby murder. And please pray for Marcia Jean, Pastor Butch's wife. Please pray for her, um, for a mighty healing on her. And please pray for Jonathan O'Toole. Uh, Jonathan, I put you on my prayer list, and I'll be praying for your safety. And thank, thank you, because you so you're a mighty man of valor, standing up against the evil. And Pastor Butch, you're a mighty man of valor. And thank you, for Pastor Butch, for having the good guests that you have on. And I just, I'll get off and let someone else get on, but I want to say, uh, praise the Lord for Call to Decision Ministries, and please, folks, please support Pastor Butch with your prayers, and if you can stick, as Gary Roby says, a shekel in the mail for Pastor Butch, please do so, because we don't have that many men of courage, and and Jonathan, thank you for your courage. By the way, Jonathan, you have a great name. I love Jonathan because of Crown Prince Jonathan in the Bible, uh, that he and his armor bearer went up against a whole bunch of Philistines together, and two men took on a, a probably a close to thirty different bad guys. So praise the Lord That's for right, mighty the men and women of valor. God bless you, Pastor. The Philistines Bush. had thank the high you, ground. God bless you too. The Philistines yeah, had the high ground. <laughs> they did. And Jonathan said, "There's only one way we find out. Uh, only the Lord knows, and we're not going to find out if we don't try." And the Amen. Lord delivered them into His hands. And we're, I love we're it down because by, we're down about the, the last. Truth. Then, but the last five minutes, Jonathan, about five minutes left, and I want you to tell about talk about this movie, folks. I watch this movie online. It's called Retaliation. And if you want to get hold hold of Jonathan, it's retaliation dot com. But very quickly, take about three minutes. To tell us about your movie. Yes, Pastor Bush. It's called retaliationmovie dot com. The website okay. is retaliationmovie dot com. You can watch it there if you want to support there. I have self-funded to make this film, where the film was made in Uganda, right by the Nile River, the same river that that baby Moses floated in. And believe it or not, uh, Pastor Butch, I play an abortionist in the movie, an abortionist for, um, yeah, it sounds a lot like, uh, oh, did you lose me? Can you hear me still? Oh, yeah, I I, I saw you there. I saw you in the movie. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Well, I I portray an abortionist for Starry Mopes, which sounds like, like Marie Stopes. Marie Stopes is the, out of the United Kingdom. The lar- they, now they call it MSI International, but the largest abortion provider in Africa comes from UK. Marie Stopes was real good friends with Adolf Hitler in her life. She was a real woman. And she, uh, in Ireland and all over Africa, all over the former British Empire, that's the organization that does most of the abortions, including in Kenya and Uganda. So I'm there for Starry Mopes. We just kind of change the letters around. And I'm an abortionist who seduces in the film, who seduces and impregnates one of his students at the medical at the uh, medical school, and then uh, when she becomes pregnant, she doesn't take the, the the injections he tells her to. He does an illegal abortion on her. Abortion is still technically illegal in Uganda, and he botches it and he kills her. And you can't tell. So we go from there. I'm not, I don't want to spoil the film too much, but we're taking it 
to the people of Africa to show them that even though the West is using all these dollars, all these pounds sterlings, all these euros coming from Manhattan, coming from New York to force abortion and sodomy down your throat, that you can fight back, that the local people, the local African people can fight back and enforce the law in their local communities. They can do the law. They can uh, overrule the corruption and the money pouring out of America by, by organizing, at the, just like we could in America, by nullifying at the community level. Imagine if the people all got around Lorna when she burned down that clinic and said, no, everybody in the neighborhood, every church showed up, said, You're, you, if you want to arrest her, you're going to go through us. Well, that's how we can nullify at the we the people level these abominations. And that's Amen. the point of retaliationmovie.com. We're showing the people in Africa, in Kenya, in Uganda, that they can fight back. And you can watch the film there. We took it last month, every weekend, we took it to a different slum in Kenya and showed it on a projector. And I've done all this. A few people have helped me, but the majority of it, by the grace of God, working in the oil field in North Dakota through difficult winters, self-funded to make this film. And I need your help. This is one way we can fight back against the Western imperialism, which is satanic. And, 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 and how can folks London. help you? Yeah. How can folks help you? What can they do? You can help me. There. My, my P.O. box is there on the website, retaliationmovie.com. But you could send a check or money order to me, P.O. Box 906, Newtown, North Dakota, 58763. But you can find all that, and you can watch the movie for free at Retaliation Movie. Com. Well, folks, if you want to help, if you want to help Jonathan, Nengi's address. If you if you want to go through us, you specify in your letter or whatever your donation online uh, or on, uh, on a credit card that you want to go, go to Jonathan. I promise you, he'll get every dime of it. You can do it right through us, Jonathan O'Toole. Thank you for your courage, and I promise you, I'll be writing Lorna as soon as possible and trying to encourage her and seeing how we can maybe help financially later on. But keep in touch. Tell me what's going on behind the scenes if you don't mind. Okay. Okay, I will. Thank you, Pastor Butch. Well, you're more than welcome, my friend. We're down about one minute. Well, anything you want to say in closing? Well, we need to put ourselves in between the people being destroyed and the people destroying them. Somehow, interpose your voice, interpose your body. Proverbs uh, 31, people think of that as being about a righteous woman, but there's a, the beginning part of it is, is uh, directed toward men. And the, and the mother of King Lamuel says, open your mouth for the dumb, for those who can't speak for themselves, in the cause of everyone appointed to destruction. Open your mouth, judge righteously. So whoever you are, if you've got a mouth, or if you, and if you've got a tongue, you can open your mouth, and you can interpose your words and be a voice for the voiceless little babies. And Amen. for the people in Africa who are on the receiving end of this wickedness. Jonathan, when you get a chance, read Proverbs 24, 11 and 12. Talk to you soon, my brother. Have a good night. Hey, you too. Thank you. Okay, folks, we'll see you in the office tomorrow. Hopefully, I'll be I'll at least be here someday tomorrow. Look forward to talking to you then. 800-777-4403 or 304-846-4448. See you there. Satan's army rolls the land seeking souls of fallen men. Melody Cedarstrom and CSE Talk Radio team up as Common Sense Voices of Integrity. I personally endorse Melody Cedarstrom to be your trusted go-to expert for all your precious metal needs. Experts agree a financial crisis and even collapse is inevitable. Given our government's lack of economic leadership and self-interests of those in power, it's no longer a question of if you should purchase gold and silver, but if you will purchase gold and silver before it's too late. Melody encourages you to tune in each weekday morning. Visit CSE talkradio.com. We both agree truth and education are the two significant factors in both our missions. There is a wealth of misinformation out there. Let Melody and Beth Ann help you sort through the chaos and bring you home to the truths that will ensure that you and your family are protected. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading 1-800-375-4188 or online at dgscoins.com. Melody and Beth Ann are strong forces together working to preserve liberty and bring America home. Home.